Praise the Lord, beloved of the Most High God, in the mighty name of King Jesus. I was meditating this morning and I was thinking about how it's so sad that so many people who name the name of Christ do not understand the Lord's definition of grace. In the Bible, if you search it out and you understand that the Bible says that our righteousness is as filthy rags before the Lord. If you think about the Last Supper or the Lord's Supper, where the Lord had this supper prepared for himself and the disciples. And he bids you to come to that supper. As he is bidding us now to, to come as the world, really, believers, we already got our ticket, but the world he is bidding to come to the wedding. And the time is drawing short. And they decide they want to come in. Somebody decides they want to come in. And the Lord says, here's, here's what I've prepared for you. And you want to pick up your dirty boots and put them on the table. As your offering to contribute something to what he's already prepared. Yeah, I hope that you got that image because that's just how egregious that act is when people take that same manner or attitude and think they can add their filthy rags works. It's like putting their dirty boots on the Lord's table. Grace is God's unmerited favor to hell-deserving sinners without any expectation of return on the part of the sinner. Now, I got to give credit where credit is due. The late Dr. Curtis Hudson said that. Now, sadly, some people say, oh, well, if he said it, I'm going to reject it. Well, then you're being very foolish. Because whatever you issue you might have, if you didn't think he was perfect and Go look in the mirror. Go look in the mirror right now. You ain't perfect and neither am I. There's only one perfect person. And he's seated at the right hand of the Father. And his name is the Lord Jesus Christ. So whatever flaws you might think Dr. Curtis Hudson may have had in his teaching or in his life, not my concern. The definition is right. According to the scripture, that definition is 100 percent right he nailed it God's unmerited favor to hell deserving sinners without any expectation of return on the part of the sinner you can't add one not even one of your filthy rags works to his grace. If you do. You have insulted the Lord. You have put your dirty boots. On his prepared table. You can't add anything. Zero. Zilp. Zitch. Nada. Nothing. Did I leave one out? Goose egg. Nothing. And yet every false religion, including faux or fake Babylonian Christianity, will add at least one thing, something like truly repent of all your sin. One of the biggest lies ever told by the devil. You're being sorry for sin cannot save you. It is your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ alone and what he has done when he was placed on that cross for us as the payment for our sin 
and suffered a miserable, horrible, torturous death, shed that blood out of his body as the payment for you. The perfect lamb was slain. It is a substitutionary death because if you or I were to do that, all we could do is die. We can't raise ourselves from the dead. But Jesus is the resurrection and the life. And he that believeth in him, though they were dead, yet shall they live. You see, he went down into death as God Almighty. Only God could. To, to defeat and take from the person, which was Satan, who had the power of death, was the devil. To take that power from him. And people get confused about this because they still see, yes, even believers, the Bible doesn't call it for us dying. It calls it going to sleep. And no, I'm not referencing soul sleep. I'm only talking about the body. The Bible is only talking about the body. For believers, the body goes into the grave as sleep. But absent from the body is what? Present with the Lord. So we don't have the, the sorrow as others. I have family that have gone home to be with the Lord. But I have promised from the Lord that the dead in Christ are going to rise first. And that we which are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. And yes, it is his instruction that we are to comfort one another with these words. Yes, the rapture is a comfort doctrine. I own it. You should own it. It's absolutely a comfort doctrine. The Lord instructed that we're supposed to comfort one another with these words. And you'll hear people that will scoff. The Bible says in the last days, scoffers will come. Scoffers are believers, y'all. They're believers, but they don't believe in his promise. Because if they did, they wouldn't scoff. The world don't believe. They wouldn't even waste time scoffing. It's the believers going, where is the promise of his coming? Where is the sign? It's right here in the book, but they can't see it. Because you'll hear things like, who are we to think that we're so special when other Christians have suffered so horribly for their faith throughout the ages that we should escape? Well, let me tell you what, those other Christians who were suffering horribly for their faith, if they believed in his promise, they were looking for his glorious appearing at any moment, even though they were suffering, yes, even unto death. The early church father, if you want to call them that, uh, the early church saints believed in the imminent return of the Lord Jesus Christ. There are numerous ones. Maybe one day I'll break down the list on that. There's, there's several. And they made statements that indicated they believed in the imminent, imminent return of of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says the person that holds this belief will purify themselves. This is what busts me up when I hear people going, oh, we got to truly repent of all our sin. The Bible says, I'm sorry, that hurt. <clears throat> Give me a second. <clears throat> that actually hurt to do. <laughs> the Bible says that the person who believes in his imminent return that holds to his promise will purify themselves. Why? Well, it would be just like if you knew somebody you loved and you cared about was going to show up at your door. Now, you didn't know the day or the hour. You just knew they were going to show up. Think about this. If it's somebody you love, if somebody you respect, somebody you want you to impress, think about it. You wouldn't have your house being slouchy and messy. Why? Whether it's mother, father, sister, brother, aunt, uncle, cousin. Whomever that person is to you, for us right now, it's the Lord Jesus Christ. So we're going to what? Make our house ready. He's coming to the door at any moment. So you're going to straighten up. 
You're going to get your house clean. You're going to get your house what? In order. You're going to take a shower. You're going to smell good. You're going to look good. Because he can show up at the door at any moment. Make sense? That's the picture that the Bible gives us. But getting back to the people who think, well, who are we to think? Well, you know what? Let me tell you what I let me tell you what my answer is to that. I and I'll tell you who I am to think that. I'm somebody who believes what the Lord said. I believe his promise. When Paul said, This we say by the word of the Lord, do you understand that is the same as saying, Thus saith the Lord? It's the same thing. Just rephrased. This we say by the word of the Lord. Now you either going to believe it or you don't. That's fine. But you're going to miss out on the crown. Because there is a crown that awaits those that are looking for his glorious appearing. His imminent return. Beloved, I'm sure you have already as the Lord has impressed upon your heart. First of all, to be at peace. Peace is always supposed to be the status of a believer, no matter what you're facing. I had to trust in the Lord before a crisis. I have to trust in the Lord during a crisis. And I have to trust in the Lord after the crisis. Funny how that works. Be of good cheer. It won't be long. Keep preaching the gospel. Keep telling people that they've got span to repent, but is is drawing closed. The Lord has given them this time, is, is under grace, but the dispensation is about to close. Now, yes, people will still be saved only by faith in Christ, but they're going to have to endure to the end. I do believe he will keep whoever he has purchase during the great tribulation with his blood because it's still going to be the same purchase but what what we're about to see and you see it already allegiance who is your allegiance to hmm did you pledge allegiance to the land or some other thing or some other entity now, I'm not speaking to the choir here this is for the passers-by. Because there is a day coming. And we don't often talk about this. Saints don't often talk about this, but it's called the great white throne judgment. Now, believers will not, not be there. If we are, we are on the sidelines watching what is transpiring. We're not in that line. But this is when the Lord is going to open up the books. And the Bible says that every man, this name is not written in the Lamb's Book of Life, is going to be judged according to their works. To determine what damnation they receive. I'm paraphrasing, but this is what the book says. You don't want to be judged according to your works, friends. These lordship damnation is really don't know what they're doing. They really don't know. You do not want to be judged according to your works. Oh, no. No. You want the work of Christ to be what is judged. And the Lord said, that's right. Paid in full. Next. Paid in full. Next. That, that's what you want. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. You don't want him to open up the book and go, your name ain't in here. Now I'm going to judge you according to the life you live. No. No, you don't. All you have to do is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. He is God manifested in the flesh. He was crucified, buried, and resurrected on the third day. That was seen by 500 witnesses, by the way, that he was resurrected. More than that, that he was crucified. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. But 
He did that after he kicked Satan's butt down there and took the keys to death and hell. Beloved, passers-by, time is short. If you have not believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and trusted in him, you have but a short time to do so. Because he's going to take his bride out of here. And anybody who's left behind is going through what is called the time of Jacob's trouble. And the Bible says it's a time that never was before, nor shall it ever be again. You don't want to be here. You don't want to be here. Repent, which means change your mind. And believe the gospel. The good news. How that Jesus died for your sin. Was crucified, buried, and resurrected on the third day. As the payment for your sin. And you, no matter what you've done. You will receive the gift of pardon. Which is the forgiveness of all sin. Past, present, and future. And eternal life. You will be with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords forever and ever. And any family, friends, loved ones, other saints that are up there, you will be in God's forever family. Immediately. And you can't lose it for any reason. Now that to me is good news. Don't you think so? I think so. Be blessed, beloved of the Most High God, in the mighty name of King Jesus. Amen.